Dr. Fan Lai, uh, Assistant Professor, Department of Rehabilitation Sciences, um, Poly U, uh, to deliver a topic to you. Um, the topic is the protective impact of telemedicine on persons with dementia and their caregivers during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, before the talk, uh, let me introduce Dr. Lai to all of you. Um, Dr. Lai um, uh, received his bachelor's degree in occupational therapy from Poly U. Then uh, he received the MSc in occupational therapy and also obtained his PhD from the Poly U. Um, among all the um, teachers and professors in the Department of Rehabilitation Sciences over the years, um, he, he is proud that he, he came, uh, he, he is very proud to be the homemade product of PolyU. Um, so he's uh, actually uh, receiving all his uh, education from PolyU. And um, he has been working in HA, Hospital Authority in Hong Kong for more than 20 years. And he has extensive experiences in teaching, clinical experiences, uh, research, administration that cover um, psychiatric and rehab and physical rehabilitation. And uh, he has been working uh, actively in clinical research uh, when he was working in the hospital authority too. And his records of publication content presentation also cover a lot of uh, areas such as vocational rehab, geriatric orthopedics, wheelchair sitting, amputation, home safety, fall prevention, uh, problem solving of uh, people with substance abuse, uh, dementia, and also caregiving. So, wow, um, Dr. Lai actually uh, are very uh, um, knowledgeable actually in many, many areas. So, um, so today we are very glad to uh, invite Dr. Lai to deliver the talk. Uh, before the talk, I would like to uh, tell you about the ground rules of today's presentation. Dr. Lai will present his uh, topic uh, in about 45 minutes, in about 45 minutes. So we'll be around uh, 115 to 120. And after that, we will allow a question and answer. Um, so our preference will be uh, the questions that you text to us, you text to us. So if you have any questions that you can text on the Zoom, then we will answer the Zoom question first, the text question first. And if we have time, if we have time, then we can allow some people to switch on your mic um, to um, ask your questions verbally. Okay, so this will be the ground rules. So uh, now I would like to invite you to mute your mic first, to mute your mic first and listen to Dr. Lai's presentation. So without any ado, so I would like to uh, invite Dr. Lai to come um, to the Zoom and present his topic. So thank you, Dr. Lai. Welcome. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you for your kind introduction. Uh, I suppose our audience can hear me. Is it okay? Actually, my voice today is not that good. <clears throat> I can hear you. Yes, thank you, thank you. But the quality of the AV system right, right here in office is pretty good. So I hope you all can enjoy the talk, especially that you spend your lunch time in hearing um, um, for this uh, very, uh, I have to say this is an interesting topic, but this is really a clinical and practical topic. Um, the topic of today would be on the protective impact of telemedicine on persons with dementia and their caregivers during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, I'm Frank. Um, um, basically, that I browse through all the participants that some, some are good friends of me and some of our students and some of our collaborators. Uh, it's my, my great honor in having you all to join this uh, share, uh, uh, sharing section. <clears throat> Um, as you all know that um, the government of the Hong Kong SAR um, pay a lot of effort in, in uh, contact precautions and also for the infection control, particularly in the, in the time of the COVID-19 pandemic. The theme of the Hong Kong SAR government pays that theme is called Together We Fight for Virus, right? So we have to stand together. Um, what actually measures that the government done uh, Maybe I pose you a simple questions. Uh, these questions that I've been asking for, um, for all those uh, partners in the NGOs when we come across a meeting in concerning about the uh, people with dementia. Uh, can you remember 
audience, can you remember when the government of the SAR posed the request of the social distancing um, for public? Can you still remember when the government posed this act to us, wanted to keep the social distancing? You can you can uh, put the chat box to 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 uh, type in your reply. You know, um, social distancing has been commerce for quite a long time. Actually, um, social distancing began officially in Hong Kong in uh, 17th of February in 2020. Um, but you, as you all know that um, uh, after the Chinese New Year of last year, uh, actually it's the current year of Chinese New Year, after the Chinese New Year, uh, individuals' um, uh, social behavior had been changed, right? But the government had started officially the social distancing from 17th of February 2020. What types of measure did the government done? Yes, social distancing. There will be some travel ban. There will be some ban in the uh, public area, especially for the restaurant, for the pubs, and also from, for the, some karaoke. However, particularly for older people, what did the government done? I have to share with you this um, video. And this is a very good video by um, Aliza, Aliza there, in which uh, she, tell, she, she shared with us um, some of the very good measures about the, uh, how to prevent the virus and how to have a good infection control. I will share with you this YouTube. Chicken Okay. Um can can you hear can you hear the, 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 the movie? Okay, actually that I'm operating in another computer, but that computer was done. Uh please let me know if this movie you can't hear the voice. Uh suppose okay, right? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Uh Se Chung Quan, thank you. As you know that <clears throat> this is time of the um a promotion education video is kind of the brainwashing. I have to say brainwashing because over the night, especially in the last night, uh, since I got a sore throat, then I stopped working at home. Uh, I can, uh, when I watch the news <clears throat> from 6.30 to um, 9.30, within that three hours, this movie had been paid for more than five times. So what the, the government wanted to, to do is that uh, we have to keep social distancing, especially older people, they have to stay at home. They are um, not encouraged to go out. If they need to go out to buy grocery, better ask some young, young people to help them. Okay, essentially that it would lead to, uh, they would have less chance to expose to COVID-19, but ha have a higher chance in being social distance away from the public. What is the impact of social distancing? <clears throat> in fact, social distancing measure has been adopted for a while to contain the spread of the transmissions of the COVID-19. Especially regardless of the successfulness of such measure, social distancing inevitably impose limitations and also constraints on device uh, daily living activities. Yes, we understand social distancing have impact to individuals. How is the impact particularly for older people in the community and particularly to people with dementia and how it is, is it affecting the caregivers. Um, I would like to design further. <clears throat> for social distancing, older people, especially for those who are having cognitive impairment under the home care, are particularly vulnerable to the disruptions caused by social distancing. Besides their lung sensitivity to loneliness, Exam, excited by some uh, well-reputed scholar, 
and also the severe disruptions of the normal routine, including the access to a social support to the community level are expected, right? We can see literature reminded us social distancing have bad impact in the community, especially for uh, older people. Well, while in Western culture, literature show. And how is the impact of the social distancing in our local Hong Kong people? Um, actually, that you, you may aware that I'm a TV fan. I like to watch TV, <clears throat> in particular for some phenomenon that is really, really close to Hong Kong. Uh, in which um, I would like to remind you, if you have time, to watch this um, uh, a serial uh, called the Hong Kong Connect, Hang uh, Chen Jiao. In the September edition, they uh, conduct a very good um, uh, interview for some older people. That how is it affecting how this uh, the social distancing affecting their daily living? I would like to uh, share with you two cases. The first case is a community older people who are independently living in the community, how the social distancing affecting her daily life. While the second one is the caregivers for older people with dementia, the caregivers called Yiva. Uh, Yiva is one of my best friends actually, and she is also my collaborators in the caregivers features for people with dementia. They vividly described how social distancing affecting their daily life. I would like to spend you about five minutes in watching uh, a, 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 a summary how they feel in the social distancing. Bin 疫情到現在,我下去,也都是OK。還OK,都都運動。都運動中長啊。我都是沒什麼感覺 Hello, <laughs> Okay, as you know that um for the first um lady, um she is a community driller, independent in living in the community. It is uh, her feeling is really congruent with the literature fund. Um, she said um, about worry about about the worry about the fear of the being infected, and also reported a loneliness being in the period of the social distancing. This is the uh, reflection from a independent living older people, and then how is the um, feedback of individuals that are the caregivers? I would like to share with you the story about Eva. 
多就係直情在眼內。八月 ，Eva 收到電射通知，佢媽媽唔肯食嘢，心情煩躁。不過當時仲係疫情高峰期 ，Eva 唔敢帶佢睇醫生。擔心㗎，真係有得進冇得瞓㗎。不過我又覺得喺擔心之餘，就盡咗我哋能力咯，即係話盡量去做一啲補救嘅工作咯。即係譬如我早而家知道佢呢個情況，咪早整藥，即係開藥俾佢食。係啊，你幫我拿呢袋嘅，咁咧我今日睇咗中醫啊，誒話佢個血虛同埋誒個肺弱，咁我要買啲。疫情下 ，Eva 話理解院舍停止探訪嘅安排，不過好想見媽媽一面，即使遙遠咁望一望，佢都願意嘗試。聽唔聽到我媽咪過嚟啊？聽唔聽到我媽過嚟啊？佢唔夠高啊！喂，妈妈，听唔听到啊？我喺楼下。听唔听到啊？你想唔想？我唔想得你啊！而家唔贪得你啊！咁你听日乖乖啲食药啦，食多啲嘢喎。你食得少嘢唔够力凑 B B 啊？知唔知啊？系啦，好啦，食得嚟住先。好啦，咁你今早啲休息啦吓，早啲休息啦，听日有饼饼食啊！好，拜拜。我唔睇媽媽，我可以喺我理性上邊可以平衡我自己，但老人家會覺得佢係認知障礙，佢唔記得咗發生咩事噶啦，即係覺得喺你咁嘅方面見到個女，見到屋企人，我哋嚟睇我，我唔孤單，我想揾翻佢哋翻嚟。OK， based on this um two um documentary, you can see that um social distancing have strong impact. I I I elaborate that um for older people that they are living independently in community they will feel lonely they will feel fear while for caregivers they may have the sense of being a stress and limited time of care and limited exposure to care um the motive or behind that why I conduct these studies they wanted to link some interventions to this particular group of people we understand that <clears throat> social distancing. Um, in the phenomenon is that the, the lack of such community resources for older people, uh, particularly for people with dementia, are particularly damaging to them because they rely on the resources to maintain their interpersonal link and to make relevant life adjustment to the environment. Furthermore, literature has shown social distancing could markedly compromise the quality of life and the long-term health of community dwelling older adults as well as their caregivers. We understand telehealth is a kind of cost-effective alternative road of uh, service deliver to this vulnerable group, which is compatible with the social distancing measures during the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Telehealth can be readily enhanced by utilizing commonly accessible mobile communication platforms that permit video conference, such as nowadays that we will use Zoom WhatsApp and also the FaceTime. Also, we understand telehealth allowing more direct and immersive interactions with the healthcare service provider. And literature in 2020 actually did quite a lot of the study in study the effectiveness of the telehealth. Telehealth is also a mode of communications engage not only verbal, but also nonverbal communications and facial expressions, which better approximate natural human face-to-face -face interactions. Hence, video conference compared with the conventional phone calls alone may boost the social interactions in home dwelling older adults with a neurocognitive disorder where, when the opportunity for the face-to-face -face enga engagement is curtained by the social distancing. For the objective of this study, 
um, is to going to measure the benefits of the supplementary telehealth while the mobile app um, video telephony for the home dwelling old adults with cognitive impairment and their caregivers during the social distancing compared with the telehealth by phone calls over a period of four weeks. We hypothesize that <clears throat> the telehealth while the video conference could minimize the possible negative impact of social distancing measures made necessary by the COVID-19 pandemic. For the methods, uh, we invite a, a group of care recipients and caregivers that are direct uh, were allocated to either a control group with telehealth, target at caregivers by telephone only, or the intervention group. They are receiving additional service delivered to both caregivers and also the care recipient through the video conferencing uh, using the mobile device. Over a period of four weeks, we monitor the change in general cognitive functions, behavioral and psychological symptoms of dementia, and the quality of life in the liver cognitive disorder subjects, and the caregiver's health status, their perceived burden, and also on their self-efficacy. For the participants that we are recruited for community training older people, um, they are with cognitive impairment and their spousal caregivers. The sampling strategy was adopting the convenient sampling through, their, the, uh, <clears throat> through the activity day center. All participants were clients from the Dementia Community Support Scheme and all participants had been visiting the center since early 2019. That is, they have been well receiving this type of the day service. For the participant, our recruited participants should be aged between 65 to 80 and with the diagnosis of a NCD according to the DSM-5 criteria and were cared at home with their spouse as the primary caregiver. And also we contact the caregivers and so they informed consent from them and for the care recipient to participate in this study. For NCD subjects with major physical disability, such as a stroke will be excluded from this study. Following the informed consent, the recruited diets were allocated alternatively into two groups, interventions versus control group. Until 30 diets were collected for each group, group allocations was therefore not randomized. And the study was conducted according to the ethics uh, criteria according to the declarations of Helsinki and with the prior approval of the uh, PolyU Research Human Subjects Ethics Committee. For the content of telehealth, both interventions and control group receive a weekly care service with telephone covering topics and information relevant to the older adults' well being of community living, focusing on the healthy aging, psychosocial needs, and the physical well being. The content that we selected are from the government also, um, from the elder commissions. Uh, you can see that all the elder commissions are uh, over us with a lot of different spectrums of um, uh, health information and in relation to uh, older people and how is the caring. Okay, so the telehealth content based on the, the, uh, the standard content as mentioned by, by the Hong Kong EC. How we operate. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> The apps will be pre-installed on caregiver's mobile device at the time of enrollment by research assistant or by the welfare worker. While the caregivers in the control group would receive weekly phone call that would last for 30 minutes. The interventions received in addition to weekly health service delivered through the video communication app that is in the uh, experimental group. <clears throat> they will use the Zoom was apps and also FaceTime to provide the intervention. While for the NCD care recipients are always present during the video conference and the healthcare providers was able to communicate with them directly. And also each video conference was conducted on a separate day, which would also last for another 30 minutes. 
outcome measures were obtained before and after the four week period by interviews and by the questionnaires conducted under the bind conditions. For the outcome measures, there are two main types of outcome measures that we use. On the left-hand column would be on the outcome measures for care recipient, in which we will document four individuals' neural cognitive functioning that was assessed by the Hong Kong version of the module cognitive assessment, the Hong Kong marker. While the second instrument that we measure the care recipient would be on the behavioral and psychological problem, uh, we use the RB, RMBPC, the Revised Memory and Behavioral Problem Checklist, to document their behavioral and psychological symptoms. While the third instrument that we use is on the quality of life measures in Alzheimer's disease. All this has been validated into Chinese and is good in measuring the care recipient's uh, con fun fun functional conditions. While on the right hand side would be on the caregiver's outcome measures, um, we will document for individuals' well being by the use of SF36, assessing their caregiving burden by the use of the Chinese version of the Zurich Burden in Interview Scale, and also on individuals' uh, self caring caregiving self advocacy by the revised caregiving self advocacy scale RCSES. <coughs> For the st statistical testing, um, demographic data were compared by one way and over or chi square test for any group difference. While uh, outcome measures were initiated subjected to, subjected to the separate and over with two by two by two mixed design, with between subjects factor as a group, that is the intervention versus control and gender, and a within subject factor, that is the time factor, the p-test and post-test design. Additionally, another two by two and cover with uh, a group interaction with time were for performed with the inclusion of uh, education with years of education and age of the uh, of the care recipient and caregivers as covariant. A significant group by time interactions in the two by two and NOVA and and cover would indicate that change over time of a given outcome measures different significantly between groups. Moreover, there would be significant interactions were investigated further by the ANOVA restricted to a group or a given time point and ANCOVA of post-test score using p-test score as a covariant were conducted. And the effect size of significant effect from ANOVA and ANCOVA are reported in partial ETA square ad hoc uh, correlative analysis and linear regressions were performed to examine the strength of the association between the overall concomitant changes observed in the care recipients and in the caregivers. All analysis were conducted using the SPSS version 20 feet, while type 1 error rate was set as P less than 0.05. This slide share with you some of the demographic characteristics of the subjects that we connected, including individuals' age, years of education, the ratio in gender, and the number of complex disease reported in the caregivers, hour of support by family, and also the major source of the financial income. The results indicate by one way and over indicating a significant group difference with care recipients in the intervention group had almost one additional year of education than their counterparts in the control group. However, the two groups did not differ significantly in terms of the number of chronic disease in the caregivers, the hours of support provided by caregivers per day, and also their major source of income. This slide share with you um, about the uh, impact of patients with NCD that is on the outcome measures on the care recipient. You can see that the circle is on the control while the square is for the data from the intervention group. Um, in figure A, we study about the uh, marker. In figure B, we mentioned about the behavioral and psychological symptoms, while figure C is on the individual's quality of life. We can see that <clears throat> the intervention with supplementary telehealth delivered via video conferencing app 
was associated with a resilient against a fall in general cognitive functions. As shown in the control, as, as when you compare with the between the interventions and the control group, you can see it here. We can see that <clears throat> the Mocha score in the intervention group that is in here remains largely stable, and thus by the end of the four week, their Mocha score was superior than control. While in group B, in figure B, the two groups never different in terms of the behavior and the psychological problem, which hardly change over this four weeks time. In figure C, despite the baseline, that is the pretest difference in favorite of the control group. The intervention group enjoyed a higher quality of life by the end of the study period. The following trend on in the quality of life observed in the control group over the study period was absent in the intervention group. The above impressions was further confirmed by the separate uh, two group, two weight uh, ANOVA with the considerations of group and time. The analysis of both Mocha and quality of life AD score yielded a higher significant interaction. Moreover, the ANOVA also <clears throat> yielded a significant time effect, but the group effect was far from significant. The critical interaction terms remain statistically significant when compared with comparative effect size. When the age and the year of education of both care recipients and the caregivers were covariant in the supplementary and cover. By contrast, the ANOVA of the RBMPC score did not yield any significant effect. The one way ANOVA further confirmed that the Mocha and QLAD score were significantly higher in the intervention group at the study end. When the pre-test score were controlled as covariant by the ANCOVA, the effect size of the group difference in the post-test Mocha was substantially elevated. However, <clears throat> however, Controlling the baseline difference by the ANCOVA have rendered the post-test group difference in the QOLAD no longer become significant. To further garage the clinical significance, we classified our subject based on their Mocha score into major, um, major NCD, that is with the Mocha score with uh, equal to or less than 18, mild NCD, with the Mocha score from 19 to 21, and P and CD score with the score are greater than or equal to 22. You can see that the classifications of care recipients based on the Mocha score into this different category. According to this set of criteria, we can see that a high portion of care recipient, say for example, 16 out of 17 subjects, their Mocha score in the control group had attained the Mocha criteria for mild NCD in the study period. You can see here, significance among of the subjects from the baseline shifted to the mild way of NCD. By contrast, there would be no such observed of uh, quite great, great drop of the cognitive functions as in the intervention group. Apart from the impact on care recipients, then talk about the caregivers. Um, these four diagrams illustrate the findings in caregivers. Figure D is on their uh, SF36, the physical domain. Figure E also is on their SF36 on the mental health domain. Figure F is on the survey burden inventory, while figure G is on individual's care, um, care efficacy. We understand that from figure 4D, to figure G, there is a deteriorating trend in outcome measures for the caregivers were discernible in the control group over the study period. 
again, um, the circle one is the control. You can see there is a drop in all measures nearly. That was detected as a P to post four in SF36, mental and physical well-being components of score, and also in the self-efficacy and a rise in the burden. Uh, I mean in the uh, caregiving burden. While regardless of the magnitude of this deterioration seen in the control group, an opposite trend was evident in the intervention group, suggesting that supplementary video conferencing was associated with the general positive impact to caregivers. You can see that there's a drop here in the control, right? Uh, this, this one, this one will drop. While this one is a stress burden that's getting enhanced in the control, right? While for the interventions, the progress is more better. We understand the SF36 <coughs> physical well-being component and the severe burden inventory of capitalism were closely matched between subjects at the baseline, which sub subsequently divided in the study end. For the impacts of caregivers, this interpretation is further supported by the emerge of the critical group time interactions in the ANOVA for the all four measures. The effect size of the interactions was the largest in the physical and mental component in the SF36 questionnaire and the self caregiving efficacy score. Again, this interaction termed remain all statistically significant with when the age and educations of both care recipients and caregivers were covariant in the ANCOVA. This slide share with you a correlative improvement between the care recipients and the caregivers. What we did here is to uh, index the improvement of care recipients across different measures in which the pre post change in mocker QLAD score, that is the NCD uh, outcome measures, were EZ transformed and then FH that is put in the Y axis is here. While to index the improvement of caregivers, not in here, in the X axis here, <coughs> sorry. While for the index of improvement in caregivers, all four relevant uh, measures that is on the physical components of SF36, mental components, and the uh, sewer burden inventory and individuals caregiving efficacy were likewise combined, except that the P post change in the sewer burden uh, inventory score were revised <clears throat> inside to reflect a reduction in perceived burden. Okay, so this, X, this uh, Y axis is on the caregiver's response, while this X axis is on the uh, care recipient's response. We looked at there's a strong association uh, what happens across all the 60 diets. And also uh, we identified the control and intervention groups are largely segregated into two diagonally opposite quadrants of the sketch report. And associations of moderate effect size uh, was detected in the intervention group, but not in the control group. And graphically, you can see here, this red line is the intervention group's uh, performance while this blue line is the performance in the control group. You can see there will be a significant difference as, as, as shown in the, in the graphics. While statistically, the effect size is also um, a moderate size in, in, in nature. For discussion, supplementary telehealth are delivered while video conferencing app implemented through the mobile device over four weeks. Uh, when social distancing due to COVID-19 pandemic was in place, this was associated with positive effect of the community drawing older adults with newer cognitive impact and their caregivers in comparison with the conventional telehealth conducted by phone conversations alone. Our findings suggest that the use of video conference in telehealth should be further explored especially in a time of unfavorable social circumstances that may limit social interactions and connectedness in this vulnerable group. A positive impact was observed in all measures, 
except for the problematic behavior, that is the problematic behavior and the uh, psychosomatic sign, as indexed by the total frequency of the 24 item RBM PC. Um, this can be explained by <clears throat> the RBM PC frequency score remain uh, relatively stable over time. This is in keeping with the suggestions that depressive symptom, anxiety, uh, empathy, especially in those people with uh, dementia, are uh, the least moderately stable, uh, at least moderately stable over time. However, we cannot exclude the possibility that the longer period of social distancing or isolation may worsen the problem behavior. We also saw that there is reductions in cognitive functions in the NCD subject in the control group. And the additional delivery of health content while video conferencing was associated with a resilience against this reduction. Telehealth while video conferencing did not improve performance in the marker. Instead, it was maintained at a stable level over the study period. At the post-treatment, the marker score of the control group had fallen to a level below that of the intervention group. Indeed, the fall of the 1.83 in the marker observed in the control group was substantially considered that it occurred within only four weeks time. Over the same period, the intervention group showed a marginal reduction of 0.1 in the marker score. When the marker score were translated into clinical classifications according to the st standard criteria by Young and 214, we saw a notifiable portion of the care recipient with PNCD marker score in the control group attaining the marker criteria for moderate NCD by the study end, whereas there would be no such shift was apparent in the intervention group. It is therefore reasonable to suspect that the atypical weapon 4 in marker score in our control group might stem from the barriers to social stimulations and the interaction with environment that was imposed by the social distancing. Um, this is a very interesting slide. Um, I, I also uh, provide some talks in some uh, elder center recently. Um, this is the slide showing the social distancing measures in some uh, Western country. Given that social distancing uh, measures in Hong Kong were relatively less stringent and also relatively less strict when applied compared with community in North America and Europe. One may speculate that the negative impact on health and care of people with NCD would be more severe in this region. So um, we suggest that a direct comparison between community with varying degree of social distancing measure is therefore uh, encouraged. While the impact of the telehealth while video conferencing on the care recipient's cognitive functioning appear best described as resilience, notifiable improvement in quality of life over time was demonstrated in the intervention group. It contrasts sharply with the deterioration trend in the control group over the same period, such that care recipients in the intervention group enjoy better quality of life in the study end, despite them being inferior to control in the baseline. For the improvement in both physical and mental status of caregivers was supported by the SF36 health survey, which was accompanied by reductions in perceived burden index by the survey burden inventory and increase in the self-efficacy as indexed by the RBMPC. To conclude, compared with telephone conversations alone, video conference could capture important social elements intrinsic to face-to-face -face interaction. This could be critically beneficial for people with NCD and their caregivers at home. Social distancing likely have exacerbated the impact of social isolations resulting from the mobility limitations in this group of older adults. Indeed, the feeling of loneliness is known to be associated 
with the low engagement in face-to-face -face social interactions, as well as lower the use of mobile communication device. Video conferencing was apt in meeting such a need by this vulnerable group under the unusual social conditions caused by the ongoing pandemic. In addition, older adults reportedly found the experience of video conferencing more user-centered and interesting. I have uh, several take-home messages to audience of today. The first one is supplementary video conferencing telehealth was associated with one, resilience against cognitive deterioration and improved the quality of life in persons with cognitive impairment. And second, enhanced the well being and functioning in spousal caregivers. By contrast, notifiable deterioration was apparent in both part partners who received telehealth by telephone alone. Moreover, to maximize the impact of older adults with neurocognitive disorders and their caregivers, video conferencing should be investigated as the modus operandi of the telehealth, not only under the unusual circumstances of COVID-19, but also beyond the context of the pandemic-related social distancing. There are several limitations for this study. Um, the switch from phone calls to video conferencing <clears throat> likely had affected the content, style, and manner of the delivery by the healthcare providers. And this should be, uh, then this should have been recorded and subject to analyze to isolate potential mediator variables. Moreover, the durations of the study only permit examinations of the short-term impact associated with the supplementary video conference to conventional telephone-based delivery of the health information for caregivers and for care recipients with NCD. Although a strong impact was clearly identified, it is essential to examine whether further benefits may be possible with extended periods of the supplementary video conferencing con video conference, and whether any such benefits would be sustainable when supplementary video conference ceased. Community difference in the manner and severity by which social distancing is enforced. Such comparative investigations between different geographical area and social economic segments would be instructive. Um, finally, um, this study had been published in the American Journal of Geriatric Psychiatry. May I take this opportunity to thanks for all the collaborators, partners of this project, in particular, that I would like to um, thank for Professor Ben Yi for his insight and for his care, in for, um, especially for the service for people with dementia, especially for caregivers for people with, with dementia. Um, without his input, without Yi's input, um, I don't think this project can become a meaningful project to, uh, to the community. That's the end of my presentation. Um, sorry for a little bit over time. Um, yes, may I pass the time to Kenneth? Thank you, Kenneth. Thank you, thank you, uh, Frank, for your presentation. So now we go to uh, yes. Um, so if you have any questions, then please uh, type your question in the text. Any questions? Um, we haven't received any question yet. Uh, maybe I can start with one question to you, Frank. Yes, thank you. Uh, so uh, I know that uh, you have published the paper, but um, I do have some queries about the study. So um, you mentioned you mentioned in the middle of your analysis that you divide you divide um, the participants into three groups: uh, mild, uh, moderate and also the PNCD. Actually, PNCD is those without dementia. Um, have you stratified, have you stratified the two groups with, of, with or without dementia in the statistical analysis, analyzed separately? 
Oh, okay. This uh, is this, uh, the first question. Thank you. Okay. Uh, this is a very good question that I also come across these comments from the reviewers. Um, yes, it's a good attempt in dividing further to uh, uh, demand and non-demand share for further analysis. It's a good attempt. However, that we want to um, document the trend of change. <clears throat> in fact, in fact, in baseline, that, that would be comparable between experimental and control group. While I do agree, if we can collect more samples, then we can divide them, them divide the, the samples into two separate groups and, and to perform further analysis, that would be more, uh, even more beneficial. Thank you, thank you. I think there are some questions from, from the chat box, yeah, it seems. Um, yeah, I think um, the participant typed the question to you, right? yes. uh, because I haven't seen it. Okay, okay. So you can answer, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, one question is, what activity do you include in the video conferencing? Uh, the first question is uh, from uh, Wong Ka Yi. Uh, it's about what activities do you include in the video conferencing? The second question is, do you face difficulty in empower, empowering older people to use mobile device? Um, yes, um, these two questions are also very good questions. I would like to address the second question first. Um, uh, yes, there are difficulties in, in, in empowering the older people, especially in the initial phase. Um, as long as they are not very really familiar with the, the use of this kind of platform in, in doing the intervention. Um, at that juncture, that uh, I, I do think the welfare worker did do that very good job. Um, since we just provide a, a, a cross-sectional intervention for them, um, for those, we need to have an earlier preparation. This is really important and how to get individual older people become very familiarized with the use of equipment is crucial. Um, yes, uh, there are difficulty that we, and we, we face and uh, more coaching and more support and care to them is essentially important. Well, what activities that uh, we will include in the video conferencing, uh, we would likely to use some uh, cognitive simulation media, say for example, the orientation training. And since we, we will adopt the face-to-face -face interactions, we will find some topics uh, also based on the Hong Kong EC content in deliver the, the interventions to them. Um, um, uh, likely that um, the content would be also for, follow the Hong Kong EC content. Uh, we capture them and, uh, <clears throat> and uh, subjects that we will have as, uh, received the same protocol in deliver in receiving that type of intervention. Um, well, another question is from Rin uh, Long Jun. Um, any standard or principle that provide video conferencing or telephone interview? Um, in this uh, relatively small scale study, um, um, we, we uh, did not uh, provide a kind of the principle while providing the video conferencing interventions. Especially uh, as I mentioned that we want to enhance the cognitive stimulation media and also the, the mode of cognitive stimulation through that 30 minutes of the interactions uh, for the online platform with the subjects. Okay. And then uh, he said, I have one more question, so I have to check it. Um, yes, and another question is from uh, uh, Chao Hu Yan. Are there any goals as a whole or within one video section? Any benefits of the video conferencing that always the face-to-face -face text? Um, um, answer the questions on the any specific goal on the whole uh, on the whole or within one video sections. I would like to say in each sections, there would be a theme also based on the content in the Hong Kong EC, um, college simulation, orientations, and also a kind of the health information resources allocation would be touched in, each, uh, in different sections. While um, the goal for these sections would based on the content of the uh, of, uh, of teaching components that involved. Um, uh, yes. Another question is from uh, uh, Amos Yong. Uh, under COVID-19 lockdown of the nursing home, some personal care uh, such as earwax packing did not perform and the hearing ability of the ear elderly deteriorated or not. Do you find a similar problem happened in my participant? Yes, this is a very good question, uh, 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 Amos. Uh, when we conduct this study, uh, actually all those kinds are home journaling, right? Uh, they have a like, caregivers in taking care of their hygiene. Um, um, but essentially they, have, they will have some difficulties in hearing. Um, <clears throat> so what we need to do is to uh, encourage for, for individuals to use the speaker 
Okay, use the speaker in, in, uh, in order to maximize the volume to them. Um, some of them, we also unknown the, the amplifier. The, the, the amplifier for them in, in using so. Uh, yes, you you, 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 call, you pick a very good point that um, um, the kind of the, the receiving ability of the auditory ability is really important. Um, uh, so um, for individuals, they are using either using the telephone call, uh, use the speakphone, while they're using the apps, also using the speakphone. And we also unknown some amplifier for them to have a better management for, for their participations in this type of interaction. Uh, yeah. okay. There's one question. Okay. <coughs> yes. Can you see uh, any standard or principles while providing the video and telephone uh, mention? It's a question earlier. Okay, let me check. Huh? Oh, okay. Any standard, <coughs> any standard or principle when providing video or telephone intervention. Um, actually, in this uh, small scale study, we want to encourage on the cognitive stimulation, more real-time cognitive stimulation. So the principle that we rely on would be on the uh, cognitive stimulation uh, theory in order to gain, gain individuals' participation to the activities. Um, for the standard, um, yes, um, there will be uh, several standards that we want to follow through about the content. Uh, as mentioned, um, <coughs> We will rely on the Hong Kong VCs uh, training content as a kind of the training component. While each section would have their own theme, as mentioned, either would be orientation, healthy lifestyle, or some sort of the cognitive stimulation like or, uh, reality orientation. And we will use this type of the standard in, 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 in commerce in the video and the telephone intervention. Uh, that's a real question. Oh, yes. Now uh, let me check. Uh, Oh, okay, thank you, thank you, Wing Chen, thank you. Uh, was, was, was there any feedback from the caregivers? Did the caregivers find it difficult to assess assist participants? Uh, uh, actually, that in the initial phase, the, the caregivers may find some difficulties in assisting uh, for the care recipient. Yes, undoubtedly, undoubtedly. But in the later phase of the, of the program, we come across that they are getting more familiarized with the use of the device. While with the use of this type of the interactions activities with the care recipient together, um, they, they do enjoy, they can have one more channel, uh, one more channel, one more types of activities that they can engage in. Um, for the feedback of caregivers, they, they say, um, this is uh, interesting, uh, this is a sun care. Uh, this is a kind of the new, new attempt for them to use. But in the setting up, in the initial setting of the equipment, they may find difficulties. Um, um, yes, um, but I, I suppose in, uh, as time finds, uh, we are getting more uh, custom and getting good use of the social distancing right now. So I do think if we uh, want to have their feedback, uh, update the feedback as in today, uh, I do think um, the difficulties may be listened than the time that we conduct this study. Um, but overall speaking, the feedback is good. Overall, overall, overall speaking, the feedback is good from the from the caregivers. Thank you, thank you for your question. Thank you for your question. Um, no more questions, and um, if uh, we can, still, <coughs> we, we still have time, so we can yeah. allow a uh, few more questions. Uh, Frank, I have a I have one question for you. Mm. Um, because in your topic, you you mentioned in the topic um the impact of telemedicine. So I have a confusion because uh, when I look at the topic, because uh, you mentioned about telemedicine. So for telemedicine, actually, is the use of you know distancing um, uh, delivery of um, medicine and also uh, uh, treatment from the healthcare discipline. But um, actually, from your topic, I I see that you are using tele platform like video conferencing to connect the uh, people with uh, dementia with uh, their caregivers. So do you think um, the term telemedicine actually fit your, fit your topic? Um, mm. It's uh, actually to me, it's a confusion. Okay. Can you, a little bit, can you clarify a bit about this? Okay, uh, thanks for questions, Kenneth. 
Um, yes, um, uh, telemedicine that we literature review that we search there, um, um, link content, uh, <clears throat> telemedicine, I, I like in this slide that the mode of communication engage not only verbal, but also nonverbal communications that involve individuals for the healthcare related topics, right? Supposed to be in this one. Yes. Um, um, literatures in 2002, 2020, that is on some recent literature, they, they also um, regard this type of the social communications and as a kind of the, with the content of uh, healthcare related media as a kind of the uh, telemedicine and telehealth issue. Um, well, specifically is that in, in conventional thinking that um, telemedicine in the content of the tele, that should contain some element on the medicine related. However, for people with dementia that we, we came across that, um, we, we also anticipate for individuals that we can assess and to monitor and to train individuals cognitive function throughout. Then um, in, in the updated literature, they also regard um, by the use of this type of media platform can also deliver the, the um, telemedicine for clients, uh, especially for those with NCD. And, um, um, and yes, um, while we can, we can do it a little bit more better in, in more medicine content, uh, the health content in relation to the delivery to this particular type of patients. Oh, do you think uh, the term uh, telemedicine is correct? Um, um, I, I, I would prefer to use, or, or, although tele is correct, but not medicine. Okay. Um, um, let me recall uh, for, the, for the, the reviewers' comments also, um, since we, we published this one to the psychiatric uh, journal, that is American Journal Psychiatry, um, some psychiatrists also uh, um, agree, agree that um, um, uh, telemedicine should have the content of the medicines related to things. However, in our, in our study that we also uh, examined and also to detect any changes on individual's cognitive ability and also to enhance individual's cognitive ability. So in, in that medical domain, they also agree that um, it is a, uh, this should be, it should be better, but it's also appropriate in, in using telemedicine as a kind of the uh, uh, descriptions for this program. Okay, thank you. Uh, since they, we also <clears throat> have a similar feedback uh, from the from the reviewer, um, they would use the uh, uh, video telephony. They would use the uh, telephone uh, telemedicine, but eventually that we will come as over collectively speaking is on the telemedicine. Okay, thank you. I yes, did that. I'm not the reviewer. Hello, I'm not the reviewer. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um. Okay. So, any more questions from the participants? Um. Oh, no, one more, one more. One more, okay. I have um, it. Oh, yeah. Learn, learn, learn come fight. Yeah. Are there any hardware support for the carer and also the elderly in this subject? From, from his experience that, from his experience, uh, hardware support uh, such as this why is quite crucial for conducting telehealth stuff. Uh, yes, absolutely agree with uh, uh, Learn's comment. Um, um, is there any hardware support? Yes, we can unknown. Uh, actually, there we unknown uh, some tablet for the older people uh, and participate in this study. Uh, yes, and hardware support is very important, especially uh, as mentioned that they need to install, pre-install the uh, apps in order to make the program run. Um, both hardware and software are uh, important and crucial. Um, yes, in this study, we offer some hardware support for them. Thank you, thank you. Um, so we can allow one more question. <coughs> question. Any more question? Um, we can, uh, if you don't like to text, then you can uh, switch on your mic and then uh, ask us face to face through the Zoom. Any more questions? Oh, I, I got one more from the check box. Uh, what other potential types of kind do you think that can benefit from telemedicine? Um, nowadays that um, uh, the pandemic is com comes again. Um, actually that, um, that I'm interested in working for uh, older people. Um, um, uh, yes, older people should be one of the major uh, target participants that we target for. and. In particularly, in particularly that we also would like to uh, try to um, converse this program 
um, for um, COPD. Yes, this type of uh, people also need a really strong um, uh, community support in the day activity training. Right, so um, I, I do think I do think in, in older people, another spectrum could be people with COPD. While we also have some discussions with uh, colleagues working for children, okay, for some children with the SEN could also could be one of the way in order to using this type of the, the, the surface for them. Okay, thank you. So uh, as we have mentioned, uh, this will be the last question. So thank you uh, very much for your participation uh, in this online departmental seminar. So we welcome you again to participate in the next uh, departmental seminar, which will be uh, two weeks later. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Fang Lai, for your uh, wonderful and uh, very insightful presentation, uh, especially uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic.